Hey everyone, let's chat about random numbers, -da 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 -da, or alternatively talk at least about how to implement them. The implementation that we are focusing on is a crate called FastRand, and it's an implementation of this which and which were created by Wang Hang Yi from Fudan, China. We think of random number generators as quite complicated, really nasty pieces of code, kind of fits aligned a little bit with maybe this feeling of never wanting to implement cryptography, you know, kind of along those things. We don't try to create something that's cryptographically secure with this random number or pseudo random number generator. Instead, maybe you can see that the emphasis is on, is on simplicity and fast rather than rather than being cryptographically secure. I want to show how the code is structured. I find it really interesting. It's very small. It's a single library essentially for the core implementation. And then we've got the global random number generator as a separate module. However, lib.rs is just 700 lines of code, including all of the tests. So, and all of the comments. So it's relatively short. And the first thing is the struct RNG, which has as internal state a 64-bit integer. And that's all the space that is required in memory over time. The implementation starts with creating the ability for those 64 bits to be filled up with these essentially three lines of code plus a plus an, an assignment. Once we have the unsigned integers all done, then the code moves into actually implementing random number ranges for all the different types of integers through a, ran, uh, a macro. And then once all of the integers are sorted, there's another implementation block which deals with everything else, such as uh, being able to generate a random letter or letter or number or a floating point even. And so everything is built on the basis of uh, unsigned integers and in particular unsigned 64-bit uh, integers. And then you can see that the library itself kind of expands the capabilities of uh, fast rand over, you know, by kind of working up from, from that small step. So I want to show how we generate bits. It starts by expecting that you provide it with what is called a seed and then once you've got a seed you modify it and we modify it with these magic bits <laughs> and we have a wrapping adds which means add this magic number just a kind of scattering of bits and if you hit the top of the integer range wrap around to zero so if you know a little bit about how computers are implemented you know they're all zeros and ones if we get to all ones then start right from the beginning again think of it as, as as a big circle like a clock face rather than hitting the wall or hitting the ceiling we then store that updated state and then we convert it to 128 so the and two unsigned 28 so it's do we double the space and then we multiply the seed with some other magic bits <laughs> Sounds kind of crazy. And then we take with this carrot operator. So if you haven't seen the carrot operator, this is exclusive or. Exclusive or means that for if we, we, we have, let's say we have the bits on one side and the bits on the, on the other side. Exclusive or means that for every bit, one of them could be positive or the other one could be positive, but, but, but not both in the same line. All of the conversions between U28 and U64 are a little bit confusing. If we multiply two numbers, we're going to hit the hit the ceiling and we don't want to do this wrapping ad thing. Instead, we want to have enough space for this multiplication to succeed. Uh, on the left, we have the bottom bits. And on the right, we have the top bits from T, which is actually just some modification of S. Allow me to explain what's actually happening. 
with these XORs, I'm going to go into a little program called EVCXR or evaluate, Evaluation Context for Rust that enables me to do things like one plus two equals or one plus two and then give me the result like three. So we produce a REPL out of, out of Rust code, which is kind of cool. Now we have this, let's say one, two, and three, and we want the binary form. So if you use this double colon and then a B suffix, you get out a, a binary number, except it, this is looking for a literal. So we'll just put it over here. And then, so this is the binary, but if we wanted 16 bits, let's say, we would then say 16. So we now get padded bits to the left. From here, I can demonstrate what is happening with XOR. So let's add some more bits. One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, five, four, three, two, one. And in fact, I can cheat and go back to something else that I had prepared earlier. So here is everything. The number on the top are the is the binary representation of uh, 12,345 and 54,321 is here. Now their XOR result is in the line at the bottom. The Where there are two values that are, are equal, the result is zero. Where they are unequal, the result is one. And this is essentially how this algorithm mixes up all of the bits. It kind of washes them all together again and again and again. That's how a, something that feels random uh, is produced. Now, interestingly, there's no comments about like where these magic numbers come from. I suppose if you are in the depths of the library, you probably understand that there's an algorithm there. However, it might be nice to put that in <laughs> at some point, like where, like why those bits? Uh, there's quite a few zeros and ones. It just looks kind of like mushed together. So an XOR operation is going to do something funny with all of this. Great. Okay. Now we have looked at the implementation. We've looked at the code structure. We've looked at the implementation for those of you who are part of my Patreon. I want to offer you a little bit extra. So there is some extra content that I'll be providing for you in terms of looking at also the tests and the benchmarking. So this has been a bit of a tour of the Astra and Crate. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.